Thank you for that beautiful music, Tom, this morning. Bless you. Good morning, church. May you feel the love of Christ abiding in you this day. I'm Pastor Carrie Cameron. I welcome you to the temple goers, to the Zoomers, and to the YouTubers. Be with us this day in spirit with us. Today's lesson is on the marriage covenant. So welcome. Let us stand as you are able, and we will be singing in the midst of new dimensions, 2238, which you've already practiced this morning. The words are on the screen, or in your faith we sing. of new dimensions in the face of changing ways who will lead the pilgrim peoples wandering in their separate ways God of rainbow fiery pillar leading where the eagles soar we Starving people, warring factions, and despair. Who will lift the olive branches? Who will light the flame of care? God of rainbow, fiery pillar, and leading where the eagles soar. We are people, ours the journey. Now and never, now and ever, now and ever more. As we stand, a world divided by our own self seeking schemes, grant that we, your global village, might envision wider dreams. God of rain. Fiery pillar leading where the eagles soar. We are people, ours the journey now and ever, now and ever, now and ever more. We are men and we are woman, all persuasions, old and young. Each a gift in your creation, each a love song to be sung. God of rainbow, fiery pillar, leading where the eagles soar. We are people, ours the journey, now and ever, now and ever, now and ever more. Should the threats of dire predictions cause us to withdraw in pain, may your blazing phoenix spirit resurrect the church again. God of rainbow, fiery pillar, leading where the eagles soar, we your people Ours the journey, now and never, now and never, now and never more. Amen. I invite you to the call. You have been called. O oh God, whose name is to be chosen above great riches, we trust in you. Your love surrounds us like great mountains, and your care fills the poor of this world with hope. Lead us, 
to discern your side in our present circumstances, that we may have courage to serve with Christ, not counting the cost. Amen. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. All-knowing God, whose wisdom flies in the face of our own, open our lives to your point of view. Teach us to pursue riches of the Spirit and not material gain. Enable us to value faithfulness more than safety and security. Give us blessed assurance of your never-ending love. Amen. Please be seated as Glenn brings us the anthem this morning. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submit. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. But the Spirit goes down His love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. feeling blessed today. God has been good to me. 
Thank you, Glenn. Beautiful. I'm going to invite the girls to come up. We're going to stand right here today. Come right here, Abigail. There we go. Who do you love? Your family. Your cousins and your family. Okay, wonderful. Is there anybody here that you love? Your grandma. What about you? Yes, your grandma, of course. Oh, kind of. <laughs> that must be some kind of special love, my girl. I, I think so. Well, you know who loves you? I do. Thank you, Glenn. Amen. <laughs> got another one in the back. Oh, we got a hand over here. Look at that. Look at them. Look at them, everybody. Woo! We love you. And we are so glad that you're coming to church. And we're so glad that your grandma is willing on two Sundays a month to take you back into Sunday school and read the Bible together and play games and all sorts of wonderful things. Well, there's one other person that loves you. No questions, no strings. You know who that is? Mm -hmm. Jesus, you're right. And so, just like we've been doing every week, we're going to sing you a song. Let's step down here so we can see the words together. And let's everybody sing it loud and clear for these beautiful children. Jesus, Jesus loves, loves the little, little children. children. All the children of the world Red and yellow, black and white They are precious in His sight Jesus loves the little children of the world One more time! Jesus loves the little children All the children of the world Red and yellow, black and white They are precious in His sight Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Okay. You can go ahead and sit back with your grandmother that you kind of love. <laughs> Good morning. This morning we are reading the Canticle of Love. It's found on page 646 in your hymn book or on the screens. And I'm going to read the, res the, the musical response, but I'm only going to read it. We're not going to sing it. And then we'll continue on with the regular response of reading. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Let love be genuine and live in harmony. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, outdo one another in showing honor, be humble and never conceited. Love is stronger than death, and jealousy is cruel as the grave. Floods cannot drown love, and wealth cannot buy it. Put love above all else. Let God's Christ's peace rule your hearts. Always be forgiving as Christ has forgiven you. Love is not jealous or boastful, arrogant, rude, or stubborn, irritable, resentful, or possessive. Love is patient and kind. Do not love in word or speech only. Love also in deed and truth. Receive each other in sincerity. Find mercy and grow old together. Love rejoices in the right. It bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. Our love is faithful and endless. When the Lord builds the house, the labor is never in vain. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Those who serve the Lord are redeemed.
Our gospel lesson this morning is from Mark um, chapter 10, verses 2 through 16. Some Pharisees came to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, what did Moses command you? They said Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order to, that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw them, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Carol, for bringing the word to us this morning. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Almost holy God, we thank you for the word that you have placed on our hearts about love. So much love and sometimes so little love. Be with me now as I try to discern what that word means for all of us. Be with all our hearts, all our minds this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hello, God. This week, God presented with me with some visuals. And those visuals happened at my retreat in New Hampshire. And as I looked at those things that God was showing me, um, it really started to make me think about today's lesson. And so the first picture is a solid rock. For many, a marriage can remain whole and intact, like this rock. A perfect example would be Ralph Kohler and his wife Dorothy. They're 104 and 103, and they have been married for 86 years of marriage. For other couples, a wedge can be driven into the marriage covenant, perhaps by infidelity, abuse, apathy, or undiscussed expectations, life goals, or dreams. And finally, for 50% of all Americans, sadly, the marriage crumbles, breaks apart, and ends in divorce. How we understand the marriage covenant, how we live out our marriage vows does determine if a marriage will or will not survive. Today we have the Pharisees coming in to press Jesus into answering questions about this very subject, marriage and divorce. And what did Jesus say? What did Moses ask? What did Moses say about it? The men, of course, already knew the answer because Moses had allowed divorce 
not because he necessarily agreed with it, perhaps, but because the men's hearts were so hardened. Moses felt that if he gave them some leeway, he would be more respected and gain some control over these very wayward people. Unfortunately, by doing so, it became a detriment to women. Because according to early Jewish law, women were considered nothing more than possessions that had no legal rights. Whoa! God's in the God is in the building. Maybe if we turn that one off. Okay. All right. <laughs> Where was I? Women were at the complete disposal of man. And sadly, because of this law, this decree that Moses put in place, they could divorce a woman for trivial reasons, like serving spoiled fish or a, or a dish. Um, they could divorce her if she was too loud. They could divorce her if she twirled in the street. I would have been in trouble. <laughs> I, it would have been a, a, a horrible mess for me. There was no safety net for women, no legal counsel, no alimony. These women were frightened and discarded to the streets. Because a man could divorce his wife without real just cause, women found themselves begging on the streets for food, living on the streets, prostituting themselves just so that they could get some money to live. And Jesus knew this. Jesus knew the problems these women faced, and so he finds a way to protect them and to try to keep the marriage vows intact by giving instruction to these Pharisees and to the men at large that if they divorce and their wife remarries, they were going to be found guilty of adultery and vice versa. Jesus was ready with an answer that the Pharisees could not dispute. It was Jesus' way of teaching on the sanctity of marriage, emphasizing a higher standard for God's people. And at the same time, he was offering greater equality. He was offering solace and hope for women. To the least of these, while encouraging the men to stay within the boundaries of their marriage covenants. Perhaps with this kind of understanding, the men would not be quite so quick to leave their wives, rendering them helpless in society. Now, when the Pharisees came to Jesus that day, he didn't want to talk about divorce. Moses already made the law. For Jesus, the marriage covenant was priority, and though divorce was accepted, I think it was an ideal in Jesus' mind. Jesus really wanted to talk about the unfolding of the kingdom. That's what he wanted to talk about. But the men were so focused on this marriage and divorce question. Luckily, at the very moment of the exchange, people were starting to bring children to Jesus so that he could turn the conversation around and begin his instruction about the kingdom. Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Jesus knew that God the Father had an image of his people as little children, not chattel to be discarded on a whim. So this was perfect timing that these children presented themselves. 
And instead of the Pharisees grasping what Jesus was trying to do in their anger and their bitterness, they became stern with those kids. But Jesus welcomes them. And then he becomes indignant towards the Pharisees. He's mad. For Jesus' marriage was one way to stop loose sexual immorality of the times. He knew that marriage was not only for pleasure, but it held a deeper meaning of responsibility for one another, along with spiritual unity. And it was a gift from God. Jesus was trying to say, this is what it means to be married. Two people, children, loving, encouraging, supporting one another while faithfully serving God who leads them on their life's journey. Jesus' message of entering the kingdom of God through complete obedience to the Father like a child with a parent was lost on these Pharisees. Fortunately, Jesus knew what they were up to. They didn't care about his answer. Their only concern was trying to trick him into saying something against the law so that they could bring him up on charges. And I'm sure they got pretty put out and angry when Jesus lectures them. Anyone who has ever married knows that marriage is hard work. And divorce is not entered into lightly. And it's a hard discussion to have. Author David Howell says, In a broken world, divorce, however, is sometimes necessary. That's hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine that, especially when you are the one that's going through one. And I can say this because it happened to me. But sometimes, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much effort you put into the relationship, no matter what you try, the marriage ends. And it is tragic, for sure. But it does not have to end your life as you know it. Nor do I think it's evil in and of itself. I'm pretty sure no one showed up at their wedding day at the church saying, well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'll get a divorce. That's not what we do. We go into a marriage with the highest of intentions. We enter into that covenant to serve one another, to love, to commit our lives to each other. And this is Jesus' hope as well. But he also knows that we are not perfect. He puts stipulations in place to override Moses' ruling, to provide a safety net for both individuals. He wants us to try to stick out our marriage marriages, but he's not going to leave us if we can't. Dr. James Dobson says, anyone who believes that God guarantees a successful marriage to every Christian is in for a shock. It requires both parties every day working with courage and strength and perseverance and hearts filled with love. And as the hymn When love is found, says, when love is torn, trust betrayed, we hold on to hope. And we pray for strength to love till torments fade, never keeping score of wrongs. But if you can't do that, do you think God just tosses you away? No. He opens his arms and says, Come to me, you little child. I know you're hurting. Come to me. I will lay my hands on you and I will bless you. Marriage calls for a give and take, apology, forgiveness. It calls us to not take advantage of another or treat another 
as if we are expendable. It calls us to love as I have loved you. But sometimes, no matter how hard you try, no matter how rock solid you think the marriage is, no matter how many days, months, or years you give freely to it, or how many gifts or commitments you bring to it, marriages can fail, and divorce happens. It's not about justifying a divorce. It's about accepting the end of one marriage. It's about making sure you do everything that you can to end it peacefully and lovingly with a new outlook, outlook and a commitment to serve and love your God. It's about making sure that both of you survive the breakup, not leaving one destitute to fend for themselves. It's about continued respect for the other, for self and the life that you shared and you now leave behind. It's about knowing Jesus is still with you, even if you don't live up to his expectations. Look, children, come. And he laid his hands on them and blessed them. It's a vision we can all hang on to. And not just about marriage, about anything that goes on in our lives that requires a commitment from one to the other, an employee with an employer, siblings, families. Use that vision when life gets hard because it brings us a sense of hope. Every single person has the opportunity to come to Jesus as a small child and expect that we will still be loved, we will still be cared for, even if we have broken our wedding vows, even if we've broken a friendship, even if we just mess up. Jesus will be there, the solid rock, the broken rock with a wedge embedded between the two pieces, the pile of a crumbled rock, all of those, keep in your mind, they stood side by side on a road that I walked. So clear, God's message to me. And I believe those rocks can tell us a story, that there is hope and harmony for all of us as long as we continue to try and follow the will and the roadway leading to the arms of Jesus Christ. That kind of love will never crumble unless we let it. To God be the glory. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able. And we will sing When Love is Found, 643 in the United Methodist Hymnal or up on the screens. comes home sing and be glad that two are one when love explodes and fills the sky praise God and share our maker's joy when love has flowered in trust and care, build both each day that love may dare to reach beyond home's warmth and light to serve and strive. 
for truth and right. When love is tried, as loved ones change, hold still to hope, through the wall seems strange, till each returns and love grows wise, through listening ears and open eyes. When love is torn and trust betrayed, pray strength to love till torments fade, till lovers keep no score of wrong, but hear through pain love's Easter song. Praise God for love, praise God for life, in age or youth, in husband, wife. Lift up your hearts, let love be fed, through death and life, in broken breath. Now let us plant ourselves firmly in our seats, grounded, solid, connecting our minds and our hearts to the one who loves us as we pray. God of love, we trust in your continued faithfulness in all situations of our lives. We give thanks for your grace and mercy that you rain down upon us in both good and bad times. You are gracious and loving, and your comfort knows no bounds. You indeed are our everything. You're a shelter in times of storm. You are the arms that hold us when we go through difficult times. You take our pain and catch our tears. You scold us when necessary and love us when we are good. You meet us when we are joyful and you meet us when sorrow strikes. Thank you that you did not just arrive to meet us on this Sunday, but you have been with us before today and will remain with us after. You are the ears that will hear our cries for help especially for those things and people we care about and are praying for this day. For those whose marriages are starting to break, a wedge being formed give them strength. For those marriages that have ended in divorce, hold your arms wide in love and help them to be kind and caring in the leaving. For those marriages that are strong as rock, continue to be in the center, guiding, leading, and loving. We pray this day for Steve and David and Carol and Gail and Harry. We pray for continued healing upon their bodies. We pray for difficult family situations that they can be handled in a way that is hopeful and helpful. We pray for Jen as she adjusts to a new living arrangement. We lift Larry, who suffers from Lewy body dementia, who will be having surgery this week, prayers of successful surgery and healing. We pray for those who are not with us this day, who sometimes occupy a pew or a Zoom chair, or a YouTube experience. We pray for them and their needs. They may seem far away from us, but they are only a breath away because of the connection that we have with you. You allow that to happen. We are together and we love one another. 
and we love the children, and we thank you for teaching us that. We thank you for preparing the way to the kingdom of your Father through example. We thank you for accepting us as little children, offering your lap and your love and your healing hand. We give thanks that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pass peace to one another on your Zoom televisions, on your YouTube. Turn to one another and send your love to someone else. The United Methodist Church designates a number of Sundays throughout the year as opportunities for recognizing and supporting particular ministries, and they are referred to as special Sundays, and most include an offering used to fund the work of these programs. Today is one of those special Sundays. It is World Communion Sundays. So when I want you to think when you take your bread today, you are taking bread and the blood of Christ with millions across the lands. You're not just taking communion for yourself. You are taking communion for the world at large. World Communion Sunday funding um, helps provide scholarships in the United States for racial and ethnic minority students and international students as well on um, undergraduate and graduate levels. So if you wish to give to this special collection, just note it um, on your envelope that it is a special collection for World Communion Sunday. And we do have our offering baskets, both um, front and back um, entrances and also online. You may go to umcburlington.com, and we thank you, thank you for your generosity. As long as sisters and brothers are ill-clad and hungry, and we have more than we need, it is our task to clothe and feed them. As long as some have not heard the good news of God's love, we are called to share it. Let us give with a moment of silence from our generosity. And let us pray the doxology together. As we share our bread with the poor, open our ears and hearts to learn from them, to live by faith, not sight. Free us from your tendency to be possessive and protective, that we may experience the freedom and joy of giving. May faith and works together fill our lives with meaning and purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we will prepare for the holy table. Am I supposed to use that one? Was I the one that blew up? Does everyone have their elements? Did you pick them up as you came in? If not, raise your hand and the ushers will bring you them. Hans 
is, oh. <laughs> Hans is back there going, and I'm thinking, what, do I look fat? What are you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to using the microphone. All right, let us center, let us center, let us center. And may this communion service be a service of healing for you. In the midst of uncertain times, it is a good and right thing to remind ourselves not just of what could be, but of what will be. We worship the God who created time and whose promises stand forever. The scriptures tell us that God's eternal kingdom will contain a great crowd that no one could number. They are from every nation, tribe, people, and language. We worship the God who created every nation, tribe, people, and language out of love. And so God's promise of grace is offered to all, following his death and resurrection, which we remember and celebrate through the practice of communion. And in his final words to us on earth, Jesus commissioned us to go and make disciples of all nations. We worship the God who calls us from the sidelines and invites us into the work of the kingdom. One of God's blessings is the opportunity to join in the fulfilling of God's promises. As we break bread, as we drink from the cup today, remind us that we do not do so in isolation. We are part of a universal and diverse church that crosses every line the world uses to divide us. We worship the God who is preparing for us a great heavenly banquet where one day we will all feast together. May our faith in God's promises inspire us to build bridges in our community, our country, and across the world. Let us begin those bridges by praying an act of confession. Together, God of mercy, we confess that we have not loved you with all our being. We had done things which we ought not to have done. We have built walls between neighbors and between countries, and we have ignored the cries of those in need. Forgive us and set us free, that we may live into the hope of your calling that your reign may come on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Thanks be to God. Jesus died for our sins. We are forgiven. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, we thank you for your presence in our midst as we gather in praise and thanksgiving to you. And together... Creator God, you made humankind in your image with varied hues of skin, hair, and eyes, of varied heights and widths, with differing talents and gifts. Yet all of us are beautiful in your sight. We give you thanks for calling us to be your children. In his time on earth, Jesus reached out to all persons, poor and rich, children, women, men, sick and marginalized. He taught us to do the same, and he gave us this meal to remember him. Taking a loaf of bread, giving thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body. That is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
we give you thanks for Jesus Christ and for this meal. We ask your Holy Spirit to come to the table to spread around the world today. Bless each person and bless our partaking that we may grow into your body united in your love to bring your reconciling peace to the whole world. For these hopes and for all your promises given and kept, we give you thanks, Holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. One bread. One cup. One body in Christ. Eat and be glad. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the people say, Amen. Our life this week begins tomorrow with Einstein and the Rabbi Book Study at 3. At 6.30, a book study will begin again. The group has finished the Circle Maker book, and in between now and Advent, they're going to be studying Acts, the book of Acts. Um, so anybody wants to join, just give Bob or myself a call. We'd love to have you join us. We're doing it by Zoom. Tuesday night, we have a book study at 7 at the Sterling's house. Wednesday, 6.30, connecting. Thursday, 8.30, journey. And Friday, Christ is alive at 4.30. So I hope you take advantage of some of those wonderful things that are happening. I invite you now to stand as you are able and let us pray the closing prayer together. Yes, oh. Class meeting at 11. Sorry, I forgot that. All right. Let, stand as you were able and let us pray together. We have heard the whispers of God who sends us from worship to serve the world. We trust and respond to the Spirit's leading. Because God has blessed us, we are not afraid to take the risks of faith. We are empowered to deny ourselves, take up the cross, and follow. Amen. And our closing hymn is Bind Us Together 2226 in the faith we sing. Um, or up on the screen, and we also have fellowship in the entryway that um, Kathy has graciously provided for us this morning. Bind us together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. There is only one God. There is only one king there is only 
one body. That is why we sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Go forth from this place filled with love to share with others. Be blessed until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.